tensor classes that are useful to know about, and so I'd like to go over a few of them that come up uh, often in continuum mechanics. Um, the first one is the inverse of a tensor, so we denote it by the symbol S with a superscript minus one, kind of like you would for an inverse of a matrix, so it's really the same thing in some ways. Uh, and S inverse is defined operationally. It's, it, S inverse is the tensor that when multiplied into the original tensor S returns the identity. So, and I've written it out both in direct notation and in additional notation, so you can see the contraction of the subscripts when you do the matrix or the tensor multiplication. Okay, so S inverse IJ times SJK gives you delta IK, so the components of the identity there. So this is one important tensor that comes up a fair bit. Another tensor that comes up quite a bit is the transpose of a tensor. So you start with the tensor S, just like we did with the inverse case, and then its transpose is denoted with S superscript T for transpose. And it's defined operationally also. It's the tensor that satisfies this relationship. So we have a, we have a given tensor S, and the tensor S transpose is the tensor that satisfies this relationship here for all vectors A and B. So if I, if I apply S to B and then take the dot product of A, that's the same as applying S transpose onto A and then taking the dot product of B. So you, you swap the order of the operations there, and that defines the, the transpose. And perhaps the best way to see what's going on here is to go ahead and... Uh, look at the components here. And so we can get to the components by setting A equal to say EI and B equal to BJ. And if I do that on the right hand side here, I'm going to get SIJ. And then on the left hand side, I'm going to get S transpose JI. So we can see really what's going on here is that the components of the transpose are computed from the components of the actual tensors by swipping, swapping the first and the second indices. So if you think in matrices, matrices, that's switching the rows and columns. So it's completely consistent with the definition of transpose that one learns in elementary linear algebra. So, so said again. So components just swap rows and columns. Um, Another interesting tensor that comes up sometimes are or category tensors or orthogonal tensors. And they have the property that if you take a tensor and you multiply it by its transpose on the front or the back, you'll always get the identity. Okay? And really what that's saying is that the inverse of the tensor is its transpose. And so this defines an orthogonal tensor. And these come up a fair bit in continuum mechanics. Uh, they're related to rotational motions. Um, one really important consequence of this is that if you, if you take the norm of Q acting on a vector A, it's actually equal to the norm of just the vector. So again, as I mentioned, this comes up in the context of rotations, and so you can think of Q as rotating the vector A, and so it doesn't change its length, it just changes its orientation. And, and this is relatively straightforward to prove. Uh, so the norm of AQ is going to be the square root of AQ dotted with AQ. And now what I can do is I can apply the definition of transpose to move one of the Qs across the dot product and replace it with a Q transpose. So I'll take the Q, I'll move it up front, and it'll become a Q transpose. Now I have Q transpose Q sitting inside there, and that's just the identity. So I have identity A dotted with A. Well, identity A is just A. So that gives me the square root of A dotted with A, which is the norm of A. So that, that's a nice property. And then in the proof here illustrates the use of the definition of the transpose also. So, so these are uh, three sort of classes of tensors that are important. They're, they're inverses generated from tensors, transposes generated from tra tensors, and then they're orthogonal tensors, which have this property where their inverse is equal to their transpose. Uh, another important uh, category of tensors are deviatoric tensors, and these are tensors that are traceless. So if I take the trace of a tensor and I get zero, then we call that tensor deviatoric. And, and deviatoric tensors come up quite often in metal plasticity. And, and when we talk about the stress, it's actually not the stress that causes a material to yield. It's the, 
it's the, the deviatoric part of the stress that does that. So you can, you can define a traceless part of the stress and then that is what actually is used to determine whether a metal will yield. Um, so given any tensor, let's say T, it's deviatoric part and we, and we denote this in, in, in two different ways. Uh, we can we can write um, we can write dev t or we can write t with a superscript prime on it, um, and bo both are common notations. The deviatoric part of t is defined as t minus one third of the trace of t times the identity. So, and I've written it both here in direct and in additional notation there. Uh, so this is a definition, and and it's easy to verify that. This tensor that's on the right-hand side here will always have trace zero. So if you just take the trace of the whole expression, uh, you can verify that this is going to come out to zero because the first term I'll get trace t, and then from the second term I'll end up taking the trace of the identity, which is three. So the three cancels with the third, and I'll have trace t minus trace t, so which is zero. Uh, note I can rearrange this also, and I can write t as deviatoric part of t plus one third trace t identity. So I, this is, there's an additive decomposition of, the, of any tensor into a deviatoric part, and the other part is called the spherical part. Okay, so we have the spherical part, and then this first bit here is the deviatoric part. And that's always possible with any tensor. Um, Another special category of tensors are symmetric tensors, and these are tensors that are equal to their transpose. And in, in indices that says Sij is equal to Sji. And, and this definition is completely compatible with the definition of symmetric matrices. So everything above the diagonal looks like everything below the diagonal. Um, there's also something known as a skew symmetric matrix, and these are matrices that are equal to the negative of their transpose. So Sij is equal to minus Sji. These don't come up too often, but they do come up every now and then, so it's good to know the definition. Um, just like um, with um, any tensor, you can construct its deviatoric part by employing this uh, operation here. You can compute the symmetric part of any tensor by adding it to its transpose and then dividing by two. So sim A, the symmetric part of A, is one half A plus A transpose. And in indices, uh, I've, I've written it down below there. So you have both the direct notation and the additional notation version. You can do the same thing with the skew part. So the skew part of A is one half A minus A transpose. And it's, it's easy enough to verify that both this first expression here is symmetric. Just by taking its transpose, you'll see you get the same thing because the transpose of the transpose is equal to the original tensor. And it's easy to verify that the second expression here is also skewed by taking its transpose. Uh, so, and, and what's important here is that a transpose, transpose is equal to a. So that helps you see the, the validity of those statements there. And notice now that if I add the skew part of A to the symmetric part of A, I'm actually going to get A back. So there's a general decomposition here that says that A can be decomposed into a symmetric part and a skew part. So we, we have, in a way, two different decompositions of tensors that come up often. There is this one where we break a tensor up into its symmetric and skew parts, and then there's this other one over here where we break a symmetric or sorry, we break a tensor up into its deviatoric part and its spherical part. So these are all uh, special types of tensors or tensors with special properties that come up uh, and it's nice to know the, their definitions.